Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode number 25 of our TCW Save and DW 2020. This is Total Wrestling for April week three. And uh, this is a big episode, I think, because it's kind of a launching point for everything to come over the next several months, not only into our next pay-per-view where Angels Fear to Tread, but also Total Mayhem after that, and then all the storylines uh, to come. I'm not saying this will be the necessarily the most important episode of the series, but for me, you guys know I get excited when I know exactly where we're headed, and I know that this is a an episode that's going to put a lot of things in motion that you may not see just yet, but I know it's there. And so it's kind of fun when we get to start booking that kind of stuff. So should be a fun show. Let's start things off. Kyle Rhodes in the ring with the World Heavyweight Champion, Aaron Andrews, the ace, and his best friend, Sammy Bach. And uh, Kyle Rhodes says, guys, I know you're coming off a hard tag team you know, match last week. Uh, ends in disqualification after Greg Gage uses the belt on uh, the World Champion here, Aaron Andrews. But... The rumors have been out there, and uh, it's time to make it official. Yes, there has been a new match added to the card for Total Mayhem at the end of May, and that match is Sammy Bach going one-on-one with Jay Cord. It has been made official. Sammy Bach, your reaction to that? And Sammy just says, you know, Kyle Rhodes, usually I'm someone that likes to talk. I'm not here to talk, and I sure won't be there to talk at the end of May to Jay Cord because... I'm going to teach him something that he should have learned a long time ago. You don't just get by on your family name, and you don't just ask for your destiny and get it handed to you. You've got to earn it. And Sammy Box says he's tried to earn it by getting into my business, getting into my best friend Aaron Andrews' business, and trying to go that route to get what he wants. Well, let me just tell you, as long as Aaron Andrews is the champion, I'm going to make sure that Jay Cord never gets his hands on that World Heavyweight Championship, and I'm going to teach him a lesson at Total Mayhem, and we're going to finish this once and for all. So Sammy Bach taking aim at his opponent, and yes, that is the match that has been added. Total Mayhem, Sammy Bach, Jay Cord one-on-one. Kyle Rhodes jumps back in and says, all right, well, now it's official, but we also know that you two guys uh, will be at uh, where Angels Fear to Tread here in a week and a half. Um, our next pay-per-view, uh, and he says that is where we will officially unveil the official contract for the match uh, with you two guys putting it on the dotted line there uh, to make it official. So that is uh, a big part of uh, where Angels Fear to Tread. We'll have these two there. And then we turn the attention to Aaron Andrews, who has something to say here, and he says, you know, Kyle, I just want to echo what Sammy just said. Jay Cord has tried to stick his nose into our business thinking that it's going to be what gets him this World Heavyweight Championship on my shoulder. But just like Sammy said, as long as I'm the champion, I will make sure that Jay Cord never gets his hands on this belt. And that is a promise. Uh, and I know that Sammy will go out and take care of business against Jay Cord at Total Mayhem. So Kyle Rose says, well, guys, um, you're not in action here tonight, but we've got some big stuff planned here. And as Kyle Rose continues and Aaron Andrews and Sammy Bach shut up stop and maybe go to leave the ring here, 92 for the segment, so a great way to start. Someone else makes their way out, but it might not be who you think it's going to be. As here comes Angry Gilmore. Uh, we heard last week uh, what he had to say, and here comes Angry Gilmore, who walks into the ring, goes over, shakes hands with Sammy Bach, shakes hands with Aaron Andrews, shakes hands with Kyle Rhodes, and uh, Kyle Rose just kind of, you know, steps over to the microphone and says, Mr. Gilmore, you're you're here. Um, we heard from you last week, and uh, I assume you've got something else to say here. And Angry Gilmore just says, I, I do, Kyle Rhodes, and I wanted to make sure that you guys, you know, were able to, to say what you needed to say uh, before I came out. But I am here to essentially reiterate what I said last week, that I am here for one reason, and that is to become the real world heavyweight champion for the pro- prestigious prize in professional wrestling. And to me, that is the prize that is sitting right there on Aaron's shoulders. And so I just wanted to come and introduce myself and just say, I respect everything about you guys. And I am going to have your back when it comes to, um, you know, dealing with those little piss ants, Greg Gage and Jay Cord. Um, I will have your back. But I also want to just let you know why I'm here. And so Aaron Andrews just, you know, kind of steps up. He nods and, he, you know, without the mic here, he just says, I understand. And he looks at the title belt on his shoulder and then sticks his hand out again. And we get another handshake 
between Angry Gilmore and Aaron Andrews. So, once again, <laughs> Angry Gilmore making it clear. He's here to win the title. That title currently owned by Aaron Andrews. What's going to happen? We'll see. 83 for the segment, but we're still not done here. Um, so I know this pretty crowded opening segment, but we're setting some things in motion here, of course. So afterwards, speaking of um, whatever Angry Gilmore called him, and here comes Jay Cord and Greg Gage. They enter the ring. We got Kyle Rhodes in the middle. The baby faces to one side here. They come in, and Greg Gage immediately goes over and just snatches the microphone away from Kyle Rhodes. And the baby faces kind of step up here, and Gage says, back off, back off. Let me just cut to the chase here. You uh, you guys all talk about how you deserve this and deserve that and how you know, you're know you better than us and all this other stuff. Let me just tell you something right now. We are the sons of legends, and there is no one who has the pedigree that we have, no one out there who's learned from the two best in professional wrestling history. Jay's done it. I've done it. No one else has been able to say that, and no one else has learned the things that we've learned to put ourselves in a position to where we are going to take over TCW anytime we want. And he says, and it's going to start at Total Mayhem whenever Jay Cord beats Sammy Bach and makes sure he never steps into a TCW ring ever again. And then we'll take you, old man. And he looks over at Angry Gilmore. We'll take you out to the back, too, and do the same thing because I think Jay owes you a little something after you cheated to beat him at Battleground. And then that leaves you, Aaron Andrews. He said, so why don't we do this? Jay and Sammy have something to do at where angels fear to tread because they're going to sign that contract that assures Sammy Box retirement after Total Mayhem. But it seems that you and I have nothing to do at where angels fear to tread. So I wouldn't dare ask for a World Heavyweight Championship opportunity because that belongs to my friend here, Jay Cord, and it will happen right after he beats Sammy Bach at Total Mayhem. But what I think we should do is see just how good you are. Because when I stepped into the ring with you last week, Aaron Andrews, I wasn't that impressed. And so, Greg Gage says, so I'm challenging you to a match at where angels fear to tread. You and me in the ring, no titles on the line. Who is the best man inside this ring? Is it me or is it you? Because I know the answer to that. Jay Cord knows the answer to that. Our fathers know the answer to that. But maybe you need to finally learn the real answer that you're not the ace around here. The aces are standing right in front of you, and you know that we are the future, and we're going to prove that to everyone. So, promo of his career here as he just takes aim at everyone and issues the challenge to Aaron Andrews. And Andrews, what does he do? He snatches the microphone out of Greg Gage's hand. He puts the microphone back in Kyle Rhodes' hand. Kyle Rhodes comes over. True babyface moment here. And Andrews says, you're on. And so we have the match that's official, and this will be our headlining match at where angels fear to tread. Aaron Andrews will go one-on-one with Greg Gage in our main event. No titles on the line. A one-on-one match at that show. So 89, that's how we leave it here with the three babyfaces. Cord and Gage head out of the ring. Um, seemingly gotten what they've won here. So we know it's going to be Cord versus Bach. Total mayhem. We now know it's going to be Andrews versus Gage at where angels fear to tread. And then there's Angry Gilmore, who has made his intentions clear about still wanting to be the world heavyweight champion. So I know a lot of talking to begin this show. But again, this has got to set a lot of things in motion here that we're going to have moving forward. 89 for this one. I'm pretty excited about what we're going to have uh, with all this. So, all right, now we get to a match uh, after that and get everyone out of the ring. And here comes the elite. Eddie Chandler comes out and he's got a singles match here against Bart Biggins. And it is Eddie Chandler getting the win over Bart Biggins here by submission with the fabulous stretch. Remember, this stretch has just destroyed people at this point after some interference from Nate Johnson. So shenanigans from, you know, the elite as usual here. And remember, they've really turned it up a notch after losing that tag team match at Battleground because we kind of know that Wolf basically told them they needed to turn it up a notch after losing that match because they settle for nothing less than, um, you know, wins, as we know. Uh, And we've seen what happens when you don't have that. So 
Chandler gets the win over Biggins here. 64 for the match. So not really about the match. It's what happens afterwards. So Chandler and Johnson going over, they're not done with Biggins, right? Like they've already had interference and submission, but these two are really trying to prove themselves to Wolf now after losing that tag team match at Battleground. So they're just going over, taking it to Biggins here. And that is when we get the return of one man army who was beaten down in the ring as Wolf and Doc Hammond watched a couple weeks ago. Army is back. He returns. Biggins is down, but Army comes in and he's throwing haymakers here at both Eddie Chandler and Nate Johnson, and he sends these two guys down. Um, Army's just throwing some vicious punches here, lands it at both of them. So he's taken out the elite um, as Bart Biggins. He goes over, checks on him a little bit. Chandler and Johnson retreat, um, and that is when afterwards, we didn't put this on here, but they retreat and they start to go you know, towards the back here. And we see Wolf and Doc Hammond kind of step out momentarily from behind, uh, you know, the curtain here to the back. And that is when, you know, Doc's just kind of locking eyes with one-man army here. Who, again, you can tell still favoring those injuries from getting beaten up. But he's checking on Biggins. Doc's kind of locked eyes with army here. And then Wolf, you know, is fuming here as, um, you know, army's back and all this. And so Wolf just kind of yells at his three guys, Doc Hammond, Eddie Chandler, Nate Johnson, and he points towards the back as if these guys are going to the back to do something. And so they're out of there. Army's in the ring, but he is back here. Um, And we'll see what happens here moving forward. 59 for this one. One One-man army returns after getting beaten down and he taking it out on the elites who have been kind of the instigators in all of this. So, all right, tag team action here. The behemoths, uh, match-wise, I don't think it's going to be a great show, but it's a pretty story-driven show. The Behemoths are back. Killer Shark and Titan. They get the win over Dean Daniels and Elliot Thomas, 720. Titan pins Daniels with a Titanic choke slam here. 66 from Titan on the in-ring performance. Even 60 from Shark. We'll take that. So 59 for the match. Uh, post-match is what matters here because Nick Forth, <laughs> Nick Nick Booth per- performed poorly. That's not a shocker. Um, but, hey, we got to get Nick some popularity and start building the skills up a bit. Afterwards, uh, Kyle Rhodes back in the ring as Eddie Peake has something to say. Uh, and it is Eddie Peake, uh, a man of many words, not having many words here, as he says that uh, he heard, you know, what Mo and Tana had to say last week about their challenge, but they weren't going to give anyone else a title shot except for the Peake brothers. And Eddie Peake says, that's fine by us because that's what we've been wanting. And we're going to make sure they don't defend those titles against anyone else ever again. Because we accept their challenge, we will meet them at where angels fear to tread, and we are going to finally get the Tag Team Championships back in the hands of the Center Society. I am a leader, and I lead by example, and I am going to show not just the Center Society in the ring, but for everyone out there who sees themselves as a part of the Center Society, I am going to do this for all of you, and we will be the new Tag Team Champions. Me and my brother here, Doug Peak, we will be the new champions at Where Angels Fear to Tread. So, Peak Brothers, they're going to get their shot. Tag Team match added to the pay-per-view. Mo and Tana taking on the Peak Brothers. Eddie Peak and Doug Peak here. The leader of the Center Society going to lead by example. 66 for the match. Um, Nick, Booth perform- Nick Booth performs poorly, but uh, yes, we will have a tag team title match added to the show. So, there you go. All right, <laughs> this one, 77, because Joshua Taylor... Really doesn't miss these days. Uh, Taylor gets the win over Chance Fortune here, 957. The submission with the butterfly lock, really pushing that Fortune, just trying to hang on here, trying to hang on, but the butterfly lock does it again. Uh, Another submission win here for Joshua Taylor, and uh, we kind of see after the match. We don't have it as an angle because we didn't have time to put in this, (laughs) to be honest with you, but you know we kind of see Daryl Devine pulling Chance Fortune out of the ring after the submission. The audience, you know, kind of giving a standing ovation here for Fortune, trying to hang in there, but Joshua Taylor still standing inside, and he's kind of looking out at Daryl Devine here as Devine pulls Chance Fortune out of the ring. Where is this headed? A little tease, but you guys probably know where this could be heading towards. Um, We'll see maybe next week what that means. 77, so a good match here between these two. All right. So we said that it looked like the syndicate was kind of getting orders here from Wolf and um, pointing to the back. Where are they going? So we get Kyle Rhodes letting us know that uh, the TCW video cameras have caught up um, with Sean Dokes, who has made his way out into what appears to be the parking lot area. 
Um, and Dokes is kind of there, and he goes over, and we kind of hear this from afar, but you can tell it's Wolf yelling at the syndicate here. He's yelling at Doc Hammond. He's yelling at Eddie Chandler. He's yelling at Nate Johnson. And Wolf is just kind of yelling demands here. We don't get the full thing, but we can hear it from afar as Sean Dokes is kind of rushing over to see what's going on here. And it is Wolf demanding that Eddie Chandler and Nate Johnson solve this problem with one man army. And then Wolf, we kind of see as Dokes gets closer, the camera's getting closer. He looks over at Hammond and says, or maybe you should be the one that solves it. And Wolf just kind of gives Doc a, a pat on the chest there. Um, and then we see Wolf just kind of angrily walk away. So he's pissed about this whole army situation. He thought they had him, you know, they beat him down. And remember, Army's kind of thing is this guy doesn't give up. But he came back a couple weeks later, back for vengeance. Um, and Wolf just wants to be done with this one man army stuff. So we go over, and, you know, Hammond and Eddie Chandler and Nate Johnson are all just kind of, you know, bantering back and forth. You can see Hammond pretty, <laughs> kind of the stare. That's a perfect way to put it. Um, so Hammond just kind of staring at Wolf as he's walking away. And as Wolf's walking away, we see him kind of reach down. And Wolf has pulled out something out of his pocket here, which appears to be a cell phone. And so Wolf is walking off, and we see Wolf get on the cell phone. As Sean Dokes rushes, rushes up here to try to get a word with Wolf, and Wolf just kind of brushes him off because Wolf is making the phone call here. As we see Hammond, Chandler, and Johnson all just kind of um, continuing to have a little dispute here in the background. So a lot going on here, but... Uh, We'll see what happens. Wolf's, Wolf's pissed. Wolf's calling somebody. Hammond's clearly maybe a little irked here. Chandler and Johnson are pissed because they're getting yelled at. Will the Army problem be solved? We'll see. 70 for this segment. Speaking of Wolf, let's not forget, he is in action later tonight. He's going to be in the main events as uh, Wolf will be uh, in action, as we said, main event-wise here coming up. All right, more action here. T-Bone. As we said, was going to be in a match this week. He is. He gets the win over Jeremy Courtney. And I was just, let me tell you, I was stunned to know that I have not paired these two together. Because, uh, you know, Wolf always, I mean, excuse me, T-Bone always needs somebody to beat sometimes. And so I'm surprised I haven't had this match before. But I looked at it, I was like, well, we've actually never done T-Bone and Jeremy Courtney, who was on a gazillion match losing streak probably at this point. 66 for the match. T-Bone gets the win. Power slam. 804. T-Bone continues his hot streak here in TCW. Um, really has from the start of our save. And so... Another win for T-Bone. All right, now we get to match here between Ed Stone and Seth Whitehead, which if you did not, if you just looked from afar, you would think these two are brothers, perhaps. Um, hairstyle, very similar. Got the little goatee-looking thing here. Um, yeah, <laughs> but but hey, they wrestle each other here. 61, not a bad match. Remember, Seth Whitehead's those, uh, you know, kind of call up from MAW. Doesn't have a lot of popularity, but Stone gets a win, 65. Whitehead off his game, um, probably getting penalized for, like, experience and stuff, too, I'm sure. Inconsistency. So both of them inconsistent, but that's all right. But not really about the match here. It's what happened afterwards. Because Kyle Rhodes back in the ring, and uh, he comes over and says, Ed Stone, you requested this time after your match. Um, well, what do you have to say? We haven't heard from you in a while here, um, but it appears you have something to say. And Ed Stone just says, yeah, you know, I do have something to say. I was sitting in the back getting ready for my match, and you know, everyone was kind of telling me about everything that was said a little while ago by Greg Gage and about how he is the son of a legend and Jay Cord is the son of a legend and that no one else in the world has the same kind of pedigree that those guys have. Nobody has learned from the best the way that they have from their own fathers. And Ed Stone says, I take issue with that because everyone knows who my father is and everyone knows that I've always been looked at as the black sheep of the family, as someone who's just gone his own way and not really followed in the footsteps of his father. No one thinks that I can be a legendary professional wrestler. Everyone's looked at me as the party animal. And Kyle, I do love my parties. As you know, I've seen you at some of these parties. But that doesn't mean that I don't have what Greg Gage and Jay Cord have. And it doesn't mean that before, you know, many, many years ago, doesn't mean I didn't pick up some things from my dad. And so I just want to make that very clear. Greg Gage is running his mouth about this or that, but he doesn't need to forget that I'm here too in TCW and I've got the same goals. I want to be 
at the top. I want to prove everyone wrong who said that I wasn't the stone that could ever reach the top. But, he said, I can do that, and everyone's going to find out, and Greg Gage and Jay Cord better watch out along the way. So, Ed Stone taking issue with Greg Gage's comments because he is right. You, you know, they're not the only two uh, with a legendary father here. So, Ed Stone responding and uh, he taking issue with Greg Gage's comments here. So, first time we've heard Ed Stone talk in a while, but uh, that's what he has to say. 72 for this one after the victory. All right, that gets us to our main events, which it is Wolf Hawkins taking on Flying Jimmy Fox. And as usual, it's Wolf Hawkins delivering a great match. What do you know? 85 for this one, 93 for Wolf. Fox with a 63 on the in-ring performance. Full Moon Rising does it. Uh, gets the win over Flying Jimmy in this one. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how this unfolds here. No penalties, so this did about as well as it could. Uh, so an 85, Wolf in a great match here. Um, and we saw, remember, Wolf kind of coming off of everything that's happened with the Syndicate on this episode already. Um, apparently took out some of his anger on Flying Jimmy Fox. And so we see see Wolf kind of really amp up the aggressiveness. He's, a, he's in an angry mood here. And so that helps him get the win. Benny Benson ringside. For this one um and so that's how the match finishes right well there's someone we haven't seen on this show folks and uh if you're wondering if we forgot about him of course not uh because afterwards you know wolf has beaten flying jimmy fox benson's on the outside but just as we get to the finish here what we see is from out of nowhere freddie huggins and matt hawking make their way out they attack benny benson from behind so fox has just been beaten in the middle of the ring Benny Benson gets attacked from behind on the outside as he's rooting on his partner. And they're just stomping and kicking on Benny Benson here. As they're taking it to him, you know, Wolf's just kind of on the inside, just sort of standing it. He doesn't care, right? He has no dog in the hunt here. Um, but Fox, t- or Huggins taking it out. Benson, based on, remember last week, Benny Benson ripped up the letter of Freddie Huggins. This huge scroll that Freddie Huggins had completely ripped up by Benny Benson. So Freddie Huggins getting... His payback here in some sense, I suppose, as they start to brawl uh, with Benson. Eventually, you know, we kind of get Fox regrouping here. Hawkins still in the ring, uh, but Fox regroups. And now we've got these four kind of fighting each other. So they're all brawling around ringside and all that. So officials trying to come out, break up this brawl between Huggins and Hawking and Benson and Fox. So that's going on. And again, Wolf just kind of standing in the ring. And we still see kind of that angry stare on Wolf Hawkins face. 72 for this one. Then the signature crowd buzzing moment where the crowd's starting to buzz and they realize um, why they're buzzing. Because it's someone we haven't seen in a while making his way out and Wolf is kind of looking at all the commotion going on with these four. But then he realizes there's someone standing behind him. And it is the return of the underperforming Chris Flynn who has hopped the guardrail here And now Wolf Hawkins slowly turns around and finds himself face-to-face with the former member of the syndicate, Chris Flynn, who was here. And Flynn, the noted sunglass wearer, pulls the shades off as he's standing behind Wolf. And he puts the shades on his jacket, and that's how we know he means business here, as Chris Flynn hauls off on wolf hawkins we've got these two exchanging blows now and they're just going at it chris flynn pissed off after getting attacked thrown out of the syndicate a while back he has made his return here going wolf hawkins if you're wondering where is doc hammond where is the elite remember wolf basically told them you go fix this problem they're not here ringside with him that has opened up the opportunity for chris flynn as we go off the air with punches being thrown between Wolf Hawkins and Chris Flynn. So an 84 to finish this, the, the show here. And that is how we wrap up an 86 rated show. A great main event as usual with Wolf involved. But a lot of big storyline advancement. I know, like I said, there's a pretty talk show. Like a lot of talking on this show. I understand, guys. But like this was a big one in terms of moving some storylines forward. And as you saw, we had one man army return after what happened a couple of weeks ago. Chris Flynn makes his triumphant return. Um, we've got a lot in motion here that's going to play out over the next several months at the very least, probably more than that. Um, so yeah, this was a pretty big addition of total wrestling. Good show. 86 for this one. Let's see what we get to before we wrap up. All right. So that was total wrestling. Awesome show. Fantastic reviews. Uh, SWF 
Nice struck goal. Adam Smasher, uh, the the highlight of the show, 77. So, yeah, we, we clearly outdid them on that one. Um, yeah, I, didn't, I don't think this was one of their better shows by any means. So that was that. Uh, Daniel Black Francis, I, I don't know if you watched Exploring the Seaverse, always said he was one of my just kind of favorites when I played with 21CW. So good to see him staying there. We weren't going to take him away. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where we're at on that. Email, guillotines, developmental contract, anything. Who is this guy? I think he's one of the call-ups. Yeah, he may be one of the call-ups we had. Yeah, we'll see on him. I don't, I don't know if we need him or not. Uh, drug test fees, uh, their usual stuff. Viewing figures, 3.60. Let's see how that ranks compared to everything else on television. Um, yeah, so we are... Look, we're moving ahead of Premier League football now, uh, and we're way ahead. Well, not way ahead, but um, SWF in third. We had a better show, more viewers. So we continue our ascent. Although we're beating, yeah, we're beating SWF pretty good in terms of the the demo here, uh, and we're starting to separate ourselves from Premier League football a little bit. So, yeah, we continue on the TV wise. Uh, a lot of people are interested in TCW right now. So there you go. That was a total wrestling. Again, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hope you guys are enjoying uh, the series. I mentioned, I know the past several weeks, uh, video has been a little more sporadic in terms of when we publish them, but uh, hopefully getting back on track here. A couple episodes this week and uh, yeah, hopefully getting some other new stuff in the works too. I've really been going through and you know, I'm one of those people who's got a lot of mods uh, that I've downloaded from you know different save periods and such, real world and all that. And it's kind of figuring out, all right, which ones do I want to start? Uh, have some fun with, but we also still got to get back to WWE and doing that save because uh, it's fun to get kind of people watching through that now that are watching it for the first time. And, you know, it's like we started that save a couple years ago. And so pretty fun to always get the feedback there too. So a lot of fun stuff on the channel. Check it out if you haven't already. And uh, on the next episode of our TCW save, it will be the go home edition of Total Wrestling before Where Angels Fear to Tread. <laughs>